During the day, the armed forces of Ukraine hit three control points, two personnel concentration areas, an artillery concentration area, and two munitions warehouses of the occupiers. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported this on Facebook, Ukraine Forum reports. According to the general staff, during the current 24 hours, the Ukrainian aviation carried out 11 strikes on the areas of concentration of personnel, weapons and military equipment, as well as on the positions of the enemy's anti-aircraft missile systems. In addition, units of missile troops and artillery of the defense forces of Ukraine hit three control points, two personnel concentration areas, an artillery concentration area, and two munitions warehouses of the occupiers. Meanwhile, the quagmire of carnage now consuming the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut has been mostly overlooked, given Ukraine's battlefield successes against Russia's army elsewhere. But the grueling, gruesome six-month fight for the city in the Donbass region may soon reach its culmination, and the outcome is taking on outsized importance for both sides. It reminds me of a situation in the First World War said retired Ukrainian Colonel Sarai Grabsky, now a military analyst based in the capital, Kiev. Fields and villages surrounding Bakhmut are pockmarked with fox holes, filled with shivering soldiers. Troops from both sides shoot at each other over the top of mucky, water-filled trenches that snake for dozens of kilometers throughout the torn-up countryside. Before Russia's invasion, Bakhmut had a population of 70,000 people and was known mostly for its large salt mine and as a transportation hub where several highways intersected. But since the spring, the city has become part of Ukraine's frontline defense. One video posted by Ukraine's defense ministry shows Russian soldiers hiding in a series of trenches and foxholes on the grounds of what used to be a gas station just outside Bakhmut. Ukrainian drones are seen dropping grenades and other ordnance on top of their positions, as some men scurry for cover. In other instances, some soldiers barely change their positions after a close strike, suggesting they may already be injured or are suffering from hypothermia. Another video posted earlier this week on the Bakhmut Life channel on the Russian social media site Telegram shows Russian artillery shells slamming into the colorful exterior of what used to be a kindergarten called Smile. The building is seen burning. That initial attack was followed by several more Russian artillery volleys. The Russian assault on Bakhmut is reminiscent of earlier and ultimately successful campaigns to capture the port city of Mariupol and the twin cities of Severodonetsk and Lysikansk with some notable differences. All of those cities were recognized as strategic military objectives and major population centers, whereas Bakhmut is neither. Yet even as Russian troops were withdrawing in disarray from the Larkiv region in September and abandoning the city of Kherson in November, the assault on Bakhmut continued unabated. Which raises the question, why is Russia devoting so much of its military might to capturing a peripheral city? It is about money, said Grabsky. He says the Wagner Group was likely assigned the job of capturing Bakhmut by the Kremlin, and doing so will come with a significant financial reward regardless of the number of Russian lives lost doing it. Prigozhin will play his role and show that he is an important component of the Russian military machine, said Grabsky. The Donbass region made up of the Luhansk and Donetsk blasts was annexed by Russia at the end of September in a ceremony at the Kremlin that most of the world dismissed as illegal and irrelevant. 
Rabsky says the only part of the long front line where Russia appears to have the capacity to go on the offensive is around Bakhmut, and it's important for the military to provide a battlefield success for Putin. The reasons for Ukraine's strong stand in Bakhmut are harder to discern. Russian forces have managed to capture several villages to the south, and the country's military bloggers claim the rest of the city may be about to fall, too. But analysts at the Washington, D.C.-based Institute for the Study of War who closely track social media postings about the fighting aren't convinced, nor do they see the likelihood of a Russian breakthrough even if they take Bakhmut as there are other natural lines of defense that Ukrainian troops can fall back to. President Volodymyr Zelensky on Tuesday, December 6, visited the frontline region of Donetsk in East Ukraine, describing fighting in the area as difficult with Russian forces pushing to capture the industrial city of Bakhmut. The visit came as Vladimir Putin convened his Security Council in the wake of the latest spate of drone attacks on military-linked facilities inside Russian territory. The focus of fighting in Ukraine has shifted this month to Donbass after Kiev's forces recaptured the southern city of Kherson following a Russian retreat from the regional capital. Zelensky appeared in a video wearing a heavy winter coat and standing next to a large sign in Ukraine's blue and yellow colors, bearing the city name Sloviansk and calling for a moment of silence to commemorate killed Ukrainian soldiers. The east of Ukraine today is the most difficult front, and I am honored to be here now with our defending troops in Donbass. I believe that next time we will meet in our Ukrainian Donetsk and Lugansk and in Crimea as well, Zelensky said. Russian forces and their proxies have controlled parts of Donetsk and Lugansk since 2014, when fighting with separatists broke out, and the Kremlin annexed the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine. From the bottom of my heart, I congratulate you on this great holiday, the Day of the Armed Forces, said Zelensky, who was later shown meeting soldiers and distributing awards.